Welcome, everybody, to another Jump Music Initiative podcast. Um, we have with us today uh, Mr. Chad Schroeder Gillespie. And uh, Maddie and I both know Chad from um, the National Music Center in Calgary. We were both a part of a program there. First, we met in Jam Club there, and then we were in the Build a Band build a band program together as well so uh you know chad is kind of the reason that maddie and i ever met so uh it's wonderful to have you here man it feels like we're coming full circle how are you doing you good yeah i'm doing i'm doing real good yeah thanks for asking and thanks for having me on the podcast i mean i think i just kind of discovered the podcast uh through i think it was lisa's interview uh, lisa jacobs and uh I, it just honestly made my week to see you guys carrying this forward and finding a way to to do this and connect with other people uh through the covid times so oh, props thanks. to you guys yeah so awesome yeah this is this has been super fun and and you're the catalyst for it really you know so maybe we could start kind of we, maybe we could start there um maddie sure. and i met uh in a program at the national music center called jam club and maybe we could just start a little bit there. Can you tell us about um, uh, some of the, well, maybe what we could talk about is some of the programs that you're doing at the National Music Center, and then we can kind of go back and talk about your history with the organization and then you uh, as, a, as a person. So um, can you tell us what Jam Club was? What was the, the idea behind that program? Yeah, so basically it, it was a, kind of a catalyst to connect community through music. And so it, it ran every Thursday, 3 to 6 p.m. And uh, it was open to absolutely anyone. And so you could come in. We had instruments. Uh, we had in instructors, a lot of volunteer instructors, but we were also able to bring in um, professionals like yourself and Lisa Jacobs. And uh, so kids can come in, they can just pick up an instrument and there's people to help them learn how to play the instrument. Uh, we also created a couple opportunities where you could do a live performance in the performance hall at Studio Bell, which is pretty special because it's a mm -hmm. kind of real, real deal stage with big lights and a sound crew and the whole deal. So that's pretty awesome to see kids come in and, uh, you know, when they start, they, they almost won't even talk to anyone. And then by the end of the year, they're getting up and playing on this big stage, either by themselves or with their new friends that they've made. And it's, it's pretty special, as you guys know, um, totally. just the confidence that it instills in people and uh, also just discovering their love for music. So, you know what, maybe we should back up a second, Chad, because it occurred to me that maybe some of our listeners, of course, are, not everybody is in, is in Calgary and some people might not know really um, about the National Music Center at all or what it is and, and, and what goes on there. Um, we're so blessed in Calgary to have this, to have this organization. Can you just tell us a little bit about the National Music Center as a whole? Totally. Yeah. It's, it's hard to kind of put it into two sentences because it's, it's such a big undertaking, but uh, yeah, the full name is Studio Bell, home of the National Music Center. You can find it at studiobell.ca um, is the main website. Mm -hmm. And so essentially there's kind of four different pillars. So there's a performance element and we have a beautiful performance hall. And then there's also uh, the King Eddie, which is, the oldest artifact in our collection because a big part of the center is that it's a museum and the king eddie uh, used to be a, a quite famous blues club back in the 80s and 90s and then was closed down early 2000s and so i did was, play there back in the day i'm that old. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, it was a very different place uh as some would call it kind of sketchy but it had a distinct vibe to it and uh people really loved it. And uh, like people like Buddy Guy, all these famous uh, blues musicians would come through. Um, I don't know how far down the road I'll go on King Eddie, but you can look for that <laughs> more online. And so, yeah, there's performance element. We also have world-class studios, uh, which include like the Olympic console from the famous Olympic studios and uh, Tonto, which is one of the largest analog synthesizers in the world. So we have musicians that come from all over the world to record with that. We have artist development programs where artists can come and use that equipment and record new music. Uh, and then, yeah, the museum elements. We have a whole bunch of artifacts, stuff like Randy Bachman's favorite, uh, famous 1969 Gibson Les Paul that he used on American Woman, or 59 Les Paul, sorry. And uh, yeah, and then we have lots of programs such as Jam Club and... Uh, 
we even uh, did like a seniors uh, jam club for a little while as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but kind of a tip of the iceberg of what we do anyway. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's good. I know it's a broad, broad thing to cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Chad, I'd like to ask, what are some of the best ways that young musicians can get involved with national music? So like you mentioned, there's stuff like Jam Club. I also believe there's opportunities in volunteering. I understand that you have performances like Backbeat and other things going on at the studio. And um, the other thing, the Artist Residency Program as well. Yeah, so the Artist in Residence Program is open to absolutely anyone. So anyone can apply. Um, all ages? Is that an all ages thing? It is. I mean, uh, I mean, obviously not at, you know, within reason, but it's open yeah. to people that are that are teenagers. Um, that's a good question. I, I, we haven't had any teenagers do the residency so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the new building opened up in 2016, so there's been an element of like trying to establish ourselves on a national stage and all that stuff. Um, but there there will probably be opportunities down the line. Um, this is kind of, these are tough questions to ask right now yeah. because with COVID, of course. Of we're course. really just trying to kind of pivot and um, figure out how we can connect with people and keep all those programs going. So that's a bit of a complicated question to ask, but you can absolutely volunteer and um, all the info is just on the website, studiobell.ca. And uh, so yeah, you could do it too there. Are you guys doing tours and is it open to the public right now? So we are open on weekends right now. And um, there is some limit, some, some areas you're not able to go into just due to COVID uh, restrictions. Um, but yeah, there's still tours that we have the giant Kimball Theater organ, which um, the educators still perform on. And uh, you can see the tours and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. And what is your role at the NMC right now these days? I know it's changed. You've been there. You've been there. You know, a few years now, like you said. Um, but, but what is your role presently? So my main role right now is digital media specialist. So um, dealing very specifically with video right now. That's uh, really the top priority for the organization. So I do. Uh, I do little mini documentaries on the artist in residence programs. Um, we do videos on Jam Club showing um, sponsors and just people what it's all about and how they can get involved. Uh, we do interviews with the Hall of Fame inductees. So Sarah McLaughlin, uh, I went out to Toronto to interview Tom Cochran. Cool. Uh, stuff like that. So yeah, it's kind of all over the map, whatever's needed. I've even, uh, one of the funny ones, I had to do a commercial for the Corey Hart exhibit and Brandon, my boss was like, okay, we need a, a commercial for CTV and I need you to, record a song that sounds like sunglasses at night but isn't and, oh interesting <laughs> it's uh, it's all kinds of things so, did you have to write that song and record it that day i did yeah yeah wow. it was just me in the basement on logic uh with like one of my guitars and then it was hilarious when i saw that on tv i was like oh that's how that happens uh -huh. so, yeah. Interesting though. I, I, it's really interesting that you were able to, you know, use your musical background to create something to help your to help your video, you know, your video role, I guess, sure. which is your main role right now. But having that diversity and being able to add the audio to the video is probably something that's pretty valuable in your position. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially with an, any non not for profit organization, uh, you know, the more skills you can bring to the table. <laughs> the better yeah, yeah. I, I uh i wanted to ask you a little bit more about how you got started and in, in music is that something you always knew that you wanted to do did you start out playing music or did you know you wanted to go into video and then how did that kind of lead you to the national music center yeah okay so i did i started playing guitar when i was 12 and up until that point i would played hockey professionally and it kind of came down i uh, you can't do everything just like it was too expensive. So I remember going into my dad's room and he was sleeping and I shook his hand and I told him, it's going to be guitar. And that was that. And so I ended up with a, a guitar and started playing that around 12 years old. And then when I was 19, I decided I really wanted to learn more about rhythm and really learn drums seriously. Mm -hmm. So I 
pretty much stopped playing guitar and started practicing drums like six hours a day. And then a year and a half later went off to music school on Vancouver Island. And so I did a jazz performance diploma for drumming. And, At which school, uh, Chad? Uh, so it's called Vancouver Island University. It's kind of like uh, the Mount Royal College of Vancouver Island, which is That's now Mount Royal, Mount Royal University. University. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. And uh, yeah, so I did that. I've played in a bunch of bands. I taught uh, drums for a few years. And then I uh, had an issue with my hand and I had to not stop playing drums, but I just couldn't pursue it like I wanted to. And mm. randomly took a course uh, in media studies and we had an option you could build a website uh, do photography or do a video and I was like man it would be so cool to do a documentary on my music community mm. so I did that and literally the learning curve was vertical I knew I barely had ever had a computer in my life I went to the library and got the biggest uh, video camera because I thought it looked the most professional <laughs> it's probably the opposite and uh, I made this video and the production quality wasn't great, but my teacher said, you know, I think you're, you have a, a distinct way of being able to put together a story. And so he uh, really kind of uh, per, like got me to pursue it a bit more. I submitted that movie um, and got a scholarship to the Gulf Island Film and Television School. Oh. And then a short uh, that I made there, I won an award for at the Vancouver Island Short Film Festival got a grant to make another uh, documentary on independent media on Vancouver Island and won an award for that. And so it was just kind of the universe or whatever was like, hey, you should check this out too. You know, you can still do music, but maybe there's something else here too. And maybe they'll bridge together in a cool way. And so um, trying to make this as concise as possible. But uh, I ended up moving back to Calgary and my mom was always like, this is place, the National Music Center. I think you should keep it on your radar. There might be something there for you. And uh, so that's where I did actually end up. And when the, the building opened in 2016, my mom actually passed away shortly before that. But we got to kind of walk through the building together. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And so it was really cool how that all came full circle. And uh, yeah, then I, when I moved back, I, uh, I just started playing guitar again. And that's kind of how that happened. Volunteered with Jam Club and then became an employee and all, all that stuff. Is that that's it so in great. a nutshell? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's exactly <laughs> well, that's what I was great. looking for. And I, to be honest with you, Chad, I didn't, I didn't know of that about, your, about your, your, your film past. That's very cool. Very cool. Okay, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, we've sometimes on the podcast... Uh, or lately, I guess, we're, we try to discuss a little bit about uh, non-performance uh, roles within the music industry. Because, I, you know, I think that it's such a huge industry, really. Um, but, but young people, or when you're just getting started, you can kind of only see this much of it. And you think that, the, you know, it's kind of performance or nothing. Or, right. you know, so, so I think it's, it's, it's so great to, to hear about, you know, your journey there and, and how it incorporate it always incorporates music but you know there's a different element to to your profession then and, and it's just, it's totally varied are there you know on that to that end are there uh, op uh employment opportunities either within the national music center or just kind of beyond that that you think that maybe some people aren't considering that are within the industry that aren't performance based you know, because so you do like video and video and audio, and we've we've talked to some other, uh, you know, video and, and audio uh, artists as well. But is is there any kind of you know non performance roles that you could suggest people check out? And does the NMC provide any information on stuff like that? Right. Yeah. So I mean, I'm, like we're living in an age right now, as I'm sure you've discussed with other people, where musicians really have to know a bunch of different things, right? Everyone, it, all this content stuff, learning video, learning audio, learning how to record yourself. Um, it's, it's never been easier. So I think, you know, building up all those skills outside of just learning your instrument is always valuable and ends up, you know, sometimes you don't always know how the path's gonna lead you as very, very much was my case. Mm -hmm. So the more tricks you have in your bag, 
you know, they just come in handy in all these ways. Um, now, in terms of how people can get involved, like I would say with Jam Club and even Guitar Club, we used to do things where you could learn more about live sound and mm -hmm. how to record. We did some stuff with recording and we we're hoping to kind of push that a bit more. I know with Build a Band, we had the opportunity where um, they came into the studios and recorded the live video in that. So mm -hmm. we did some of that. Um, it's just tricky. It honestly is really tricky for me to answer specifically what NMC is offering because we're just working on preparing for what it's going to look like in 2021. Yeah. So I, I just, I, I can't really say too much because it, the details are still being worked out with that. Right. But hopefully we're absolutely looking for more ways to still connect with community and, um, you know, all those same goals but just maybe mm -hmm. more in a digital element. I think innovation right now is going to be totally key on figuring out how anybody can still be a part of the industry, you know, in, in a full-time capacity. Yeah. 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 As if it wasn't hard enough for musicians before it's, uh, it's just keeps getting trickier mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like to yeah. ask you a little bit more about actually your experience at music school because that's something that um, people have differing opinions on, especially nowadays that there's so much to learn online or through different types of programs. And that, is that something that you found was beneficial for you? And would you recommend that to a young musician or in, like yeah. what kind? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That, and that's a great question. Yeah. Music school or not music school. Um, I personally found it very valuable uh, and a big part of it. And a lot of musicians talk about that is just connecting with other musicians you know, so it's this great hub where you can play with people and learn from people that you may not meet otherwise. Um, and it's also very immersive. So if you're really serious and, you know, when you're in your early 20s, you're so hungry to learn. And, you, you know, it was a great time to just be able to do that and dig in. Mm -hmm. um, something that I think people can get lost on sometimes, and I did to some extent, is just like the technical and then you start playing from here and less from here. Jory, I'm sure you've probably. I, I think that's totally a really good point. And it's a common thing that happens to students when they go to music school. And yeah, and yeah there's the, the intellectual part and then, the, and then the soul part, you know, and you have to find a good balance. That's a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. And, uh, and the thing is too, like that was a, so jazz performance and with jazz, I mean, sometimes you get so much stuff thrown at you and you're like, okay, I have to learn all this and I have to learn these modes and get all this under my belt and be working with the metronome all the time. And um, it's just, sometimes you can get kind of lost in that. So mm -hmm. I remember right after music school, I had this jam with some friends and we just played some rock songs and we started playing Misty Mountain Hop and going into that opening drum fill it was just like my spirit was like, yes, that's it. That's I needed to like reconnect with just that, you know. I get it. Um, so I get it. So yeah, I would say just like just keep keep in mind that you'd still playing from your heart if you go to music school, and to try and keep a track of where like what your musical voice is. You know, it's not just about being able to play scales perfectly or whatever. It's about trying to develop something that's unique and speaks to who you are as a musician. Mm -hmm. So I hope that helped. Does that answer your question? Yeah. No. Yeah, for sure. Cause I know oh. a lot of people, even I know there it's kind of like there's both, there's two sides to the story. Yeah, absolutely. Maddie, do you think that a lot of young musicians are still looking to go to school? Do you think that people, people still, I mean, Okay, current situation aside, do you think it's still something that young musicians aspire to? They want to go to school or it's yeah. kind of half and half or? I think for sure. I guess it depends on the person, but there's a lot of people I know that are interested in going to school. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the opportunities to study music at school look a little bit different these days than maybe when Chad and I were going to school. It's, you know, it's a little, it's unfortunate that some things have changed, but you know, I think if you're hungry enough, you can just find a way to, you know, you'll, you'll get there no matter what, no matter how it is, if you want to make it happen. Yeah. And I know other people who uh, prefer to take different programs that kind of complement their music career, maybe like audio and visual media, like you were talking about or something like that. And then pursue the music career, like actively in the scene, take a little bit of different approach like that. Yeah. That's really smart. Absolutely. Have, 
yeah, just like Chad was saying, to have some other you know skill set that you can use to complement your, your your musical career. Chad, where do you see things going this year? We're good. We're you know winters. Like man, snow hit the ground today. Yeah. What do you think? What do you see happening for music and musicians like in the next six eight months? I know obviously a lot of things are going to have to be online and digital and stuff. But where do you see things happening in the next little while? Uh, with the National Music Center, or just as oh, like just in general, a big scope. Yeah. Well, I think everyone's just scrambling to kind of find a way to 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 make the digital thing work and evolve the digital element of it, right? There's the challenge where there's, you know, just jamming with someone, you know, if we were to pick up an instrument, there'd be that lag still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's kind of a barrier that has, uh, is tough to overcome. Um, but I think like, I was just watching an interview with uh, Vinnie Coliuda last night, who is a very famous session drummer, played with Frank Zappa, Sting, you name it, like a gazillion recordings he's been on. And he was just talking about how important it is that we need to, uh, or musicians need to find a way to be compensated properly, you know? Mm -hmm. And just the challenge of this idea of file sharing. Um, it sounds like such a nice term, but it, it really has hurt the industry in a substantial way. And the way that um, artists are being compensated through Spotify and that, you know, it's, it's not very um, sustainable. Mm -hmm. So I think there just needs to be a, a lot of work in kind of figuring out something so artists can um, make a living, you know, and that quality doesn't go down. Right. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The compensation right now, there's, you know, there's such an imbalance there even though we're headed to a digital, more of a digital everything. Right. You know? yeah. yeah. Well, even my dad's a musician and he, uh, you know, he talks about how much they would get paid back in the day. And, uh, you know, if you look at inflation, <laughs> it's, uh, okay. it's a bit scary. And I'm not saying this to be doom and gloomy. It's just... Uh, no, it's reality right now. Yeah. And it's a, an opportunity to kind of find ways to evolve this and move it mm -hmm. into a, a, a way that's more fair for everyone involved. So what are some things you think young artists should look at? Should they, um, is there ways they can take action or is there different streams of income that young artists should folk on, focus on? Like, is it merch or um, syncs or other stuff like that? Yeah, well, I honestly, I think just like, developing skills outside of just playing your instrument mm -hmm. you know i mean if you if you really know your stuff with video or you really know your stuff with audio you can also complement your income through that right right and so um vinnie Coliuda did mention i think it's maria shriver is that how you pronounce her last name joy do you know who i'm talking about uh is she a journalist no Good. she's a jazz musician Oh. Like quite a well-known jazz musician. I wish I knew the name of the organization, but I believe she started uh, this organization that is kind of fighting for artists' rights. Oh, really? So you can maybe look her up and um, it might kind of lead you in that direction. But the whole purpose of what she talks about is kind of consolidating. So when they go to Congress or whatever, um it's speaking from one voice versus a bunch of different groups mm. um Interesting. So they're, yeah they're trying to can kind of consolidate the voice in the name of fighting for artists under one name mm. so uh that might be what you might have to do some research on finding out the name of that organization <laughs> um but vinnie Coleuda does mention it in that interview um which is uh the sessions with vinnie Coleuda on youtube you could check that out. He has some really uh, interesting things to say. And I mean, just hearing about his career, his life yeah, is inspiring. No doubt. So I, dig Dad, in there. Yeah. I know we can't keep you for too much longer as you have, you have to run, but um, if people want to check out stuff that's happening down at the, at the NMC at Studio Bell, um, they can come in person on the weekends. It's open on the weekend. Is that correct? Yes. In Calgary? Yeah, absolutely. And, and all other information? They should go to, if they want to find out more about what's happening there, where should they find that? Yeah, so studiobell.ca, um, and then there's a what's on listing. You just click on that. That'll keep you in the loop with everything there. But uh, Studio Bell, it's on National Music Centers on Facebook, Instagram, 
you can find us on all the major pl platforms. And uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're doing a lot of streaming stuff right now. So uh, there's lots of live concerts in that. Okay. And actually, uh, speaking to that, Marcus Trumer, who's another uh, Jam Club alumni who you had mm -hmm. on here, uh, he's going to be performing at the King Eddie. Uh, it's either this weekend or next weekend, I think. So, Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Do, do, do they stream those performances as well? Uh, yes. I'm not sure. We have a couple that we're not live streaming, but and he might be one of them, but... Uh, he, it's kingeddy.ca. You can find out the exact date when he's playing. But yeah, that just made me so happy to see a jam club. And Marcus is just kicking so much butt. His singing oh, yeah. is so great. And his guitar playing keeps coming, getting better and better. And yeah. Yeah, I know. It makes me really happy to see how far everybody's come to, Chad. It's, uh, you know, it's wonderful to see, isn't it? Yeah, and it was so, so great to have the, the Build-A-Band element come in to, and to bring you and uh, Lisa in to really kind of level things up. I know that meant a great deal to, to Maddie and Curtis and sure. Diego cool. and everyone involved. So huge luck to you guys. And um, Maddie, this is so awesome you're doing this. It, it's so great to see you kind of, again, diversifying how you're involved in music and uh, so excited to see how you evolve as a musician too, because Thank you're you. already. Here. And on that note, Chad, yeah. um, Maddie's band Exit Division just cut an album, and they just have a new video that's coming out soon. Oh. I know I was maybe I wasn't supposed to say anything, but I'm excited about it, and I, oh. I know you will be too. And you're gonna you're gonna love it. So keep your ears open for Exit Division releases. Exit Division. Okay, are you guys on Facebook or Instagram? Yeah, Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. Great. <laughs> I will add that right away and I will share share that video all over as much as I can. That is so great. Yeah, yeah. I think you're really going to love it. Man, thank you very much for uh, taking some yeah. time and, and talking with us today. Hey, thanks for all the awesome work you're doing. Uh, anytime. Take care. Okay. Thanks, Chad. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye. Right, bye.